Okay, so I've got my two drawings inserted into AutoCAD uh, and scaled, most importantly, uh, so they're the right size. And so I want to measure some floor areas. So I'm just zooming and panning to have a look at the different parts of those floor plans. And I might start with the one that has more detail, this detail of the bathroom, and work out the uh, area of tiles. So we've got a few things to look at there. You've got these uh, different units, the, uh, the vanity particularly, sorry, the uh, WC particularly, which is going to be tiled around. So the tiles obviously won't go under the WC. Um, in some cases, tiles will go uh, in through the shower, but in this case, uh, I'm fairly sure that's a separate finish. And so we'll go around that. Uh, the tiles will go under the vanity though, in most cases. And also under a lot of the other built-in units here we have for the laundry, not the duct. And then we've got here a built-in unit that's got a tile finish. So again, the tiles probably won't go underneath that, but they will go underneath the laundry area here, definitely. And then up until that um, partition there. They could go under the partition even, but in this case, we'll just assume that they're not. So you should check those things before you start uh, trying to measure. You need to know what you're trying to measure. And then I've only got the one layer at the moment, so I'm going to make a new layer in Layer Properties. I'll just click New Layer and call it Area and change the colour to something that will stand out. While I'm at it, I'll also make it the current layer, just clicking on the tick button at the top. Close this and you can see now we're drawing on the area layer. And I'm going to draw a polyline. And simply now trace around those points that I've just established. So, uh, oh yeah, so I can also show you where tiles should finish in a bathroom. And you can see here, this is drawing by one of the st a student who graduated from here. God, when did he finish? Shows how long I've been here. About eight years ago, I think. Seems like yesterday, but uh, he was a good student, but uh, he's uh, doing probably better drawings now even than he did um, as a student. So uh, he knows where tiles should finish, and you'd be surprised how many people don't know where tiles should finish under a door. Um, and uh, so if you're wondering, where it's shown is exactly spot right where they uh, should be finishing, under the door. So in the middle of the door jam here. Never wondered. Um, and uh, so not on this side, not on the corners. And the reason again it finishes in the middle is uh, so that the door hides the edge of the tiles when the door's closed. So that's where I'll start drawing, on the edge of the tile there. And then I'm going to go to the other end of that line and then I might zoom in just to get the right point so there I'm going to trace around the door jam so the door jam is going to go in before the tiles so the tiles will go up to that and then I'm going to trace around the inside face of the wall um, ignoring anything that's above the tile level like the um, shower rail there but ag again going around the shower because we've got a separate shower material just a standard slab or something, so I'm going to go around the outer edge there. Now, coming up to the WC, uh, often the tilers will include some of this because they'll have to cut tiles to go around this in any case, but, uh, but here uh, we don't need to be quite as accurate, so we'll um, actually just go around the edge there. But again, you should think about those things. Um, so here you can see I've snapped to the end of the line and then now if I go around there are points that I can snap to uh, along that edge and I probably don't need to be all that accurate so if it doesn't follow the curve precisely that's okay it'll give us a slightly different area but we know it's not perfect anyway so here you can see it's snapping to a midpoint and I'm getting a line there that's straight but a 
again, that's fine. Yeah, sure. Sure, sure. Oh, well, they would up to the edge of it, but well, for a start, the, the, the WC's got to go in the floor as well, and it's got the things that go through the floor. So you've got the waste, the floor waste, um, that has a hole in the floor, and all those other things as well. Yeah. Um, okay, so, uh, so again, I'm just looking for points that I can snap to uh, going around the edge there. So endpoints and midpoints are what I'm snapping to, if you're wondering. And then just trying to find a point that I can snap to on the wall. Or again, just chasing around the edge of the wall. So here we're going to say that the tiles go under the vanity all the way. And then again, up to the edge of this partition. And around the duct as well. But we'll just say it's going underneath all of the uh, laundry, but finishing at this internal partition. That's part of the built-in. Not really sure about that one, but we can check that in the detail, and I'll show you in a second how to check that. So for now, though, we can take it to the corner here, and then again trace the uh, door gem. So I'm back now to the point before where I started, so remember I started on the um, uh, the beginning of the tiles there on the door jam. So I can right click and choose close. It's going to connect those two points. Now, if I need to adjust this, I can always come back and adjust the polyline. So I'm going to check the elevation, and this would be good practice uh, or good. Uh, for you see for your own elevations. So you can see here we've got elevations of all of the interior sides here, even though some of them are combined with sections. Uh, so number six here and number three. So number six on W15 and number three on WD14. So number three here on WD14. Here we are shows, it's a bit unclear, but it looks like there could be tiles going underneath that partition actually. And then, next drawing, so I've forgotten the reference, I'll put it in, yeah, number 6 on number 15, which is a cheap 15. Ah, here we are. Ah, that's different drawing. <coughs> no, the reference is not right there. So, uh, so the first one I think is oh, all we have. Yeah, that's what it looks like. It's not really shown clearly anywhere, but uh, but yeah, I think that's what we can assume. So, yeah, so number six isn't really showing it, and number three, it's not clear, but it looks like it's going underneath. So, so that's what we can assume. So, so here, I can just adjust that polyline now by selecting it, and then using the grips, I can pick it up on that corner and just snap across to the wall there, and do the same at the bottom. So easy to adjust those polylines, and they're really useful um, if you need to um, adjust your areas. So it's much better um, generally to use polylines than uh, trying to measure the areas directly. So I've drawn that polyline, obviously, to establish the area that I want to measure. And then I'm going to type in area, A-R-E-A, -E -A, enter. Sorry? Oh, was it? Yeah. Oh, right, so I missed that. Okay, so we'll, I'll have a look at that in a second. Um, let's have a look. I 
Oh, yes, you're right. Spot on. Yep. Okay. So, uh, okay. So, no problem. So, we can go back and uh, again just bring those points back. So, you could um, delete the points. So, if you go to, uh, it's a bit trickier, but I'll show you how to do it because it's something you might need to do. So, on the uh, modify panel, you can go to edit polyline. So that's on the uh, expanded panel, and then you see the edit polyline. So it's gone into the menu straight away because I'd already selected the, uh, the polyline. But you may have to choose, if you choose the command first, you may have to select the polyline. And so then these options can be a bit fiddly, but basically we can go now to uh, which one? Edit Vertex. And then I'm just zooming out there so that you can see there's a cross. And so we need to go to uh, Next. There we are. And you can see the cross has moved. So I'm going to choose Next again. Next again. Next again. And you can see then that the uh, the cross is on one of the points that I want to remove. So, uh, so where is it again? So that's moved. So it's not break, is it? Oh, that's right. Sorry, I've just broken it. Um, and made it open, but uh, to delete the vertex, so it's even more difficult. I might actually just get out of that. So because I'd have to uh, do something else to um, remove the vertexes, which is going to take even longer. So I'll just delete that and uh, draw it again. It's probably easier. So I'll just do this a bit more quickly. Definitely around the duck, but otherwise just chasing the walls here. Oops. Now, there, if I make a mistake, you can go back one step. If you, on the command line, just click on the undo button there, it just undoes the last segment instead of the whole command. So that might save you some time. So there we are, I've gone back to the first point, and now again I can right click and then choose close. And there we are. So I've got a new polyline, probably easier than uh, fixing the other one. So now again, the main new command is area. So you can make sure there are no commands running by pressing escape twice and then type in A R E A, enter. And then you need to choose the object option. Probably just click on the object um, option on the command line. Select the polyline, and then you'll see on the command line it'll give you the area, but it's in square millimeters. So if you don't know, there are not a thousand, but a million square millimeters in a square meter, because it's a thousand times a thousand. So that means if you want to convert this into square meters you need to remove or move the decimal place six spaces to the left. So here it's, what is it, 47, so 4 million 775,000 and 12 millimetres, 12 square millimetres. But if you just, a good trick there, just select that and select six decimal places or six numbers there. So I've just selected six in blue. Right, and it's left with the, the last number, which is uh, the measurement in square metres. So it's 4.77 square metres, or rounded up actually, 4.78 square metres, or 4.775 square metres, however you want to say it. Okay, so I'll do another one uh, for one of the larger areas, for say the timber flooring. 
Now the timber flooring goes throughout the building, um, but you can do it in segments. And uh, sorry. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and then you can just add them up with a calculator. So so here I'm just going to do a polyline for, for one of those areas. So you've got there the um, floorboards in the bedroom, uh, which don't have an edge showing clearly at the door there. So we can just assume that the threshold is well not shown clearly so we're going to assume it's on the edge of that door frame and uh, and then just trace again we'd have to look at the detail there to be sure what's happening with the uh, the floor material going under the buildings usually it would go under the buildings but uh, but not always and here because we've got a change of materials to the tiles it could be worth looking to see if there are any details. But this is obviously not my project, so um, we'd have to check that. But uh, probably here, it's not a bad idea to maybe just assume that it would be practical to have the timber flooring underneath the buildings in line with this um, change in materials here. Yeah, that's why it is. That's that's why you do one of the reasons you do it. Um, it's also a nice finish as well to have the flooring materials going through the cupboards. So, um, yeah, so you don't have to do it, but it's, it's common. So, again, I'm just going to take it down to the uh, corner of the room there and just assume it's inside the walls there um, and the floorboards have been taken all the way up. So, here I want to go back to the corner so I can right click and then close. And that one was easy, that's just a rectangle essentially. But I can leave that there, and then when I'm ready to measure the areas, again, just type in A, R, E, A. Make sure you choose the object option. Then select your polyline. And remember again that it's going to be in square millimetres. So if you select again six numbers there, you can see clearly the square metres, 23.377 square metres. And it's always good to check that in your head. If you get a number like 233 square metres or 2.3 square metres for a room this size, um, you know your way off. And uh, you all know roughly some areas that you can use as a, a benchmark in your head, like how big the how big's a studio unit, roughly. So these are things. You know, I've, I've had to uh, look at lots of them over the years. So yeah. when you look at units, you want to be yeah, that's right. Thirty is probably the low end. I've done them. I've actually designed some that I'm not super proud of that were in the low twenties. These days, though, they they're getting a bit better, and they're usually yeah, over thirty at least, um, up to even fifty. So there's some really nice big studios um, can be that big, um, but then normally one bedders would be up to fifty, and then. Um, larger units um, going up to maybe uh, two and three bedroom will get up to around 100 metres uh, and even above. Um, there were some on, uh, what was it, uh, Dream Build, I think, the other day, where they had, uh, oh no, no, it was Grand Designs, where someone was building a thousand square metre house um, for them and their family, which um, you know, when they were saying the, the numbers, people uh, people's jaws weren't dropping, and I was thinking, I obviously don't know what that number means, but a um, thousand square metres is just, you know, phenomenally huge for a house. Um, but those are some numbers that hopefully will give you some benchmarks so that when you see areas, they mean something to you. And again, the one we had before for the bedroom, 20 metres, that's fairly typical for a bedroom, 20 to 30 metres. Um, the Figure for the bathroom as well, four meters. Again, that's not unusual uh, for a small bathroom. So that should give you everything you need to be able to work out all the areas. Uh, maybe the very last thing I'll show you is that if you have a series of um, spaces and you want to add those floor areas, so I might have another uh, area of uh, timber flooring that I've worked out for this 
bedroom next to it. There are options to add areas in AutoCAD. So here you might need to check the edge of this uh, flooring. So I'm just doing it very quickly. Um, now you never know, it depends if you've got an underlay or not. Y y the, the door jams could actually be going in over the um, floorboards depending on on what sort of floorboards they are. But, uh, but here I'm assuming it's um, going over a, um, well it's a floating floor essentially. That's what I think this apartment would have. But uh, again you can check that. So here though I've got a second area so I'm going to just use the area command again and choose that object. So this one is 14 square metres and uh, so again when you use the area command you might notice that it's got options to add and subtract areas so you can build up totals of areas. But uh, because it's in square millimetres you might find it's easier just to jot down your areas and uh, add them up to your calculator. That's like what I'll be doing. So, um, so again, otherwise that should give you enough to be able to do the areas, unless there's anything else you're not sure about. And remember, I oh, so just actually we should mention for the assignment, um, this is what you've been uh, told in the in the break that you need to get the areas for the carpet and tiles. Now I know some of you realised uh, fairly early on that there isn't any carpet as far as we can tell in that apartment so um, so technically all you need to do is measure the area for floor tiles but if you want to get some more practice it's not a bad idea to measure the uh, area for the uh, timber flooring since you don't have any carpet it'll give you something else that you can measure that's got a fairly similar area. Oh, about the assignment? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, sure, you want to come over? Yeah, I'll come over in a second. Yeah, sure. Okay, so again, unless anyone's got any questions about the assignment or measuring areas, hopefully that's enough. Yep, oh, you want me to come over? Yeah. Yep, sure.